So in Hawaii, we're in a unique situation in terms of plastic pollution because we sit in the middle of the North Pacific Gyre. So on our windward shorelines, our north shores, we typically collect a lot of debris that is what we call ocean-based debris, primarily from commercial fishing sources. Versus on our leeward shorelines, where a lot of our resorts and nice beaches are, uh, we typically find what we call land-based debris. So debris that's left behind by beachgoers or individuals who are just visiting the beach for the day, maybe leaving their cups, their bottles, their straws, and things like that. So today we're talking about Makamaka Ole, which is on the northwestern side of Maui, on the east-facing shore, and it gets a lot of marine debris. And we are focusing on this spot because of that marine debris and the fact that it's a really remote location. Nobody's ever really gone down there to do a marine debris cleanup that we're aware of. This is an accumulation zone because of all the trade winds and it's a kind of a little bay so it kind of gets pushed up on the rocks by the wind and the currents and then kind of sits there until the bigger waves come in and take it back out. So the idea is to clean up the whole beach and then come back again in the spring before the big waves come and do it again to see what has accumulated within that few month period. And that'll give us an idea of what's going on with that coastline. So we're trying to do this three-day marine debris marathon because we want the community to be involved, we want to spread awareness and really just make a difference for our ocean. We want to just figure out, okay, how can we stop this at the source? How can we you know, learn from this? We don't want to just pick it up and throw it away and not forget about it anymore. And we wouldn't be able to be doing it without the funding support from the County of Maui. And this grant that we got from them essentially is going to let us pay Pacific helicopters to fly all the debris out of the gulch. Helicopter's gonna drop it into the trucks. So once we do bring it all back to the Malama Maui Nui base yard and do our sorting counting party the next day, we'll compare our data to our fourth Sunday of every month Kaehu cleanup data. Um, and that spot we've picked up over 20 tons of debris. So we're gonna see if that location is similar in results to Makamaka Ole. Aloha, we are here at the Makamaka Ole Gulch. We're doing a coastal cleanup. This is an area that is a funnel for a lot of marine uh, debris, plastics, foam, all sorts of debris that um, comes in from all over. I am here as a volunteer with Sharkastics, and we also um, do reef cleanups almost every day, usually on the south side of Maui, but also on the west side. And um, even in the ocean, you'll find plastics and you'll find a lot of fishing gear, such as lead weights, fishing line, abandoned nets and gill nets and rope nets and trash, even diapers you find out there. So I've been doing beach cleanups for over 15 years now. And no matter which beach you're on, the type of debris has always been similar. Lots of nets, lots of baskets, lots of glass, lots of plastic bottles, recyclables from faraway lands, lighters. One of the main things that we're seeing a little bit of a decrease on at this particular beach is a lack of food containers, which has been kind of heartening not to see stuff like that, maybe more from a, a local uh, population. So here we are down at Makamaka Ole. We're doing a little beach cleanup, which is uh, becoming more than a beach cleanup. As you guys can see, there's a lot of trash in the background. Been finding all kinds of things. I actually have picked up about 15 used toothbrushes. So that was interesting to find. Came to support uh, Cheryl and her cause. Just perfect weather, perfect everything. We got lucky, we got a little bit of rain, a little bit of overcast, not too much wind. And what a difference we've made in about three hours. So definitely a good thing to be involved with. Well, I've been cleaning beaches here in uh, Hawaii for the last seven years and have noticed an increase of the plastic pollution that's been going on. I really feel like people need to to start uh, eliminating a lot of these plastics in their daily life because I think they'd be surprised at what kind of daily objects they, we find every time we clean a beach. Some common items that we find on our windward beaches that are coming directly from our ocean-based sources, especially from those commercial fishing sources, are things like oyster spacer tubes. Uh, we don't have any large-scale oyster farms here in Hawaii. Uh, primarily they're based in Asia and also around the West Coast. So we know that anytime we find one of these tubes that it's probably traveled at least 2,000 miles or so to get here. 
in the past, they used to be made out of bamboo. So bamboo naturally breaks down and we wouldn't find them on our beaches. But now we find these a dime a dozen, probably one of our most common items. Other items that we find that are really impactful to our local wildlife uh, and marine wildlife are nets, our fishing nets. And we find these in smaller pieces like this, as well as really large nets that kind of coalesce. And sometimes fishermen cut these nets off if they've gotten tangled. Um, and in other cases, they just get lost at sea and then they end up forming these ginormous net balls. And something else that we find quite a bit of are different types of floats. So these are two smaller types of floats. This one's used for gill nets. Um, and these types of floats are very hard plastic. This is kind of more of a foam-based plastic. So they travel really easily on our currents and through our winds and travel a couple thousand miles to get here, uh, but also used for commercial fisheries. So we have a few developing projects that we're really excited about. Um, one of them being precious plastics. So hopefully this is gonna provide us with a lot of test material that we can start um, playing with those machines and, and understanding um, its capacity as well as kind of the, the materials themselves. Trying to figure out how, how we can shift our perception around these materials um, from waste to a resource. But recognizing that even if we stopped producing and using plastic today, that we still have the, uh, just this massive amount of material. And so that's a lot of what Precious Plastics is about. It's about taking this material that we currently consider a waste and creating a product. Our Makamaka Ole cleanup was so successful. I'm so grateful that all of our awesome 32 people came along and did such an amazing job at cleaning up the debris. We got all of our 32 super sacks filled. So pretty much we're starting with a clean slate when we go back in the spring to see how much has accumulated since then. What we basically found was a lot of the same types of trash that we find here at Kaehu, but definitely different numbers. So it's gonna be interesting to look at the research when we really kind of tease out the data and see what we get. So that's kind of our ultimate goal is to kind of show, show what's going on with our society. So what's in the ocean is a direct reflection of what our society is doing <laughs> to our planet sadly, and so hopefully doing good things like this legislation and other changes that everybody's hip to now, it's gonna, it's gonna reflect that in our data. So that's why we take so much time to, to do it. You know, you learn about littering, how it's bad, and you learn about not using certain items or whatever, but until you come to a beach cleanup and you really do pick up that straw or you pick up that plastic utensil or you pick up that random thing that you would never think that would be on the beach, it really does open people's eyes to the problem and the solution. Like we can be part of a solution. Really, it's just forming a community and the word is spreading. So we want to thank everyone that's been involved in this project for so long and keep coming back month after month after month. It's kind of awesome to, to see. So I'm very grateful for all of you. <laughs>